they're going to start seeing themselves. They hear those words and not, that's how they see themselves. Yes. If you tell someone, you're such a blessing, I love you, Mom. You have no idea how much you have shaped my life mm -hmm. and formed my life that I don't know what I would do without you. That's a yeah. blessing. Yeah. And that's the truth. Mm -hmm. So, we also don't want to gossip. Gossip are words that hurt others. We, when someone says, will you pray for me? And they tell you, a very sensitive story about themselves. Unless they ask you to put it on a prayer chain, you don't. It is a private issue. They came to you. They know you personally. It says, this horrible thing happened. Would you pray that I can help forgive somebody and get over it? That's You keep it quiet. You can ask them, do you mind if I share this and put it on a prayer chain? If you want, and then you can say yes or no. But don't take it under your own initiative to do it. Yes. Um, when we were trained to be um, discovery, uh, recovery pastors, I say discovery because they <laughs> discover themselves. <laughs> um, but anyway, one of the things we were taught was that most realm of prayer, people think it's okay to pray for somebody else because they're a Christian and they need help. But we were taught that that is breaking, if you don't ask, that is breaking confidentiality in the truth. And if people come into your faith and believing that your prayers for them, God, some of them don't understand Think they, that they can't pray enough, that God won't hear them. So they come to you for prayers. And that your prayers will be heard because you're walking right with God. Well, we don't all walk right with God, is what we'd say. But one thing we learned was that without permission, our prayers will not be answered. If we do something without Pray, like you just said, without permission, we are not righteous with God. Because we are not looking at that person as God is looking at them. We are looking at that person as, okay, I'll pray for you, and I know God will help you, but if I turn around and say something in a woman's prayer group, that I know somebody that needs prayer, and I don't say their name, some people think that's okay. It's not. I'm going against God. Because I didn't ask that person to do it. Yeah. To share it. To prayer share prayer. That's right. So we are not in line and righteous with God if we walk in that area without permission and greatly confidentiality. I'm not sure exactly. Maybe I'm not understanding. Okay, that. So I, would, I would ask if my brother... My brother does not know Christ. Right. So I want people to pray with him. Right. Now he may not give me permission for people to pray for him, but I want to pray for him. So I'm not exactly sure. Okay, but he hasn't opened that up to you. If somebody opens up something to you, oh, okay. it's where you do not pray that word on the Oh, that's yes. good. So they've already asked you. That's kind of. We're, we're told to pray for others that don't know the Lord. We're told to pray for that. God commands us to. But when we break down confidentiality of what somebody has said to us without us saying, may I share that with you? Right. The okay. Right. Yeah. We mm -hmm. are not in line. Yes. When uh, part of the training for uh, chaplains, uh, Gary and Cindy do a very good job mm -hmm. about pointing out confidentiality. Oh, yes. It's, it's very important. important. Very, it is very, very important. important. We don't want to offend somebody. Because if it got around, someone walks up, hey, I heard this was going on in yeah. your life. Like, yeah. What? Right. Yeah. I told one person this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so that would anger somebody. And they must gossip. Yes. Yes. Uh, this is more uh, about just gossip itself. And that is, if you do hear gossip, even if you're not the type to take it in or whatever, uh, people who read gossip aren't necessarily hearing if what they say is fact. Right. 
And, and you know, then the brunt of that where the gossip was like, that what? That's not me. And if That's somebody does start gossiping to you, it's like, hey, I don't want to hear it. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. You know, just shut them down. Okay. Just say, you know, that's not yeah. right. Just talk to us. I don't want to hear it. That's That's good. Good. Yes, <laughs> Dave. <laughs> I heard the perfect retort to somebody that comes to you and wants to gossip about somebody else. They said, well, let's pray for them. Why don't you leave? Oh, <laughs> We speak positive, encouraging words so they can grow and be whatever they set their minds on. And we already, last week we went over Proverbs 22, 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. My mother raised me in church, and I did leave the church for a while, but I returned to it. You know, because I knew. I received the Holy Ghost when I was nine years old. I mean, I was just slain in the spirit, and I always wanted that experience back. Mm -hmm. That kept drawing me back to the church. Mm -hmm. Anytime I was, I traveled for a lot, and I would walk by a church, and there's several churches I walked into and went to service meeting, and I, I was kept being drawn back to the church my entire life, even though I didn't exactly follow the ways I should have. But, yes, so, and we don't want to say anything that we don't want to become true. Right. Mm -hmm. Words form pictures in our minds, and when we want to accomplish something, we first must see it in our mind's eye. So we're going to do a little exercise here. I want you to close your eyes and picture yourself in your mind. You're all alone. Your clothes are all ragged. You have dirt all over you. You're hungry and thin. You have no money no home. You are a forgotten person. Now, in your mind's eye, picture yourself. You are royalty, a daughter of the king. You have beautiful clothing. Everyone shows you favor. You live in a mansion. You have a nice home. You do not need anything. You do not lack for anything. You may have wants, but you have no needs. How does that feel? You can open your eyes. The sinners are the ones living dirt in their spirit. That's how they are. They're dirty. They're naked. They're hungry. They're looking for something. And we, having all that we need, we need to go out and share it with them. Yes. We need yes. to go and be yes. with them. We need to clothe them, even spiritually or physically. Mm -hmm. Homeless, we need to clothe them. We need to give them food. Um, like a food bank does, and our food bank here. We need to take care of them and show them the love of Christ. We as children, we are children of the Almighty God, the King of Kings. We are royalty and we need to behave like that. Amen. Yes, yes we, we need to expect favor. Yes. We need to walk as honorable and with integrity in Christ. Who are the children of God? If anybody has Bibles, I have a few scriptures that I can let you read them. Someone want to pick Matthew 5, 9? Somebody want to pick Luke 20, 34? Somebody want to pick Romans 8, 14? And then someone wants to pick Galatians 3, 24. So Matthew 5, 9. Who has that? Yes. <clears throat> How far? Through 36. 
but they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world and the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. Neither can they die anymore, but they are equal unto the angels and the children of God being the children of the resurrection. We are equal to the angels. That's what it just said right there. As children of God, we are equal to the angels. Romans 8, 14 to 16. Go ahead. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we, we uh, cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself The Spirit himself. I'm reading from the King James. Oh, okay. Uh, bear witness that we are that we are spirit and we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Amen. If We're so there. be that we suffer with him and we may be also glorified together. Thank you. We're heirs of God. Yeah. We are royalty. Yes. And Galatians 3, 24 to 29. Does someone have that? Uh, go ahead. Okay. Um, therefore, <coughs> therefore, the law has become our truth
says, on the darkest days when I feel inadequate, unloved, and unworthy, I remember whose daughter I am, and I straighten my crown. <laughs>
The Bible also tells us that God insists on being approached on His terms, not ours. In Genesis 17, 1-3, um, And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am Almighty God, walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. Abraham fell on his face, and God talked with him. Yes. Genesis 19.1 says, And there came two angels to Sodom, Sodom at even. And Lot sat at the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face forward to the ground. They're angels. He reverence. They're messengers from Christ, from God. Exodus 3, 4 to 6, it says, When the Lord saw Moses coming to take a closer look, God called to him from the middle of the bush, Moses, Moses, here I am, Moses replied, do not come any closer. The Lord warned, take off your sandals, for you are standing on the holy ground. The ground was holy because God was there. And it says, when Moses heard this, he covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. The only thing we should fear in this life is God. It says, John 14, 6, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So that, that just shows Jesus is the way. We cannot come into the kingdom any other way than Jesus, who is now at the right hand of God. In Romans 8, 33 to 34, in the NLT, it says, um, Who dare accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? No one. For God himself has given us right standing with himself. Who then can condemn us? No one. For Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us. And he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand, pleading for us. He's interceding for us. He's praying for us. Yeah. Watch over yeah. Judy. Watch over Don, is it? Yeah. Watch over all my children. Take care of them. He intercedes for us. God is the one true king and king of kings, and we do not bow to another. Right. When we enter the sanctuary, as we, I just said, I got a little ahead of myself earlier. <laughs> so we want God's spirit and the Holy Spirit to meet us there. I love last Sunday. I could feel the spirit move. I was in the second service. But during the music, I could just feel the anointing. Yeah. And I love that. Yeah. I like to feel the presence of God. And He's only going to show up when we reverence Him. He's not going to show up if we're being, you know, unruly. It says we need the Holy Spirit. Mom just finished 10 series on the necessity of the Holy Spirit. And if you want to see it, you can look on YouTube or Facebook and just Google Anna or Wilson. Um, but it is so important. We do need the Holy Spirit for our power, guidance, and everything. In 2 Chronicles 7, 1-2, this talks about entering the sanctuary. It says, Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priest could not enter the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord filled the house. I want to be knocked out. I just want to be slain. You know, I miss that. <laughs> I remember nine years old. I remember that feeling, and I, and I want it always. The king has ambassadors that represent him, and that's us. It says we are God's ambassador, and we need to we need to strive to be like Jesus the best we can. Study his life, how he was with everybody. He loved and he had compassion. How many times does it say Jesus had compassion in the Bible? I mean, he loved people, and he walked in love and in peace. You know, when they tried to take him before his son, disappeared. Um, in Proverbs 13, 17, it says, you 
A wicked messenger falls into mischief, but a faithful ambassador is health. It keeps us healthy when we obey Christ and become his ambassador. Ephesians 6, 19 to 20, it says, And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly and make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, and therefore I may speak boldly as I ought to. We need to pray to speak boldly. If we don't, we may regret it. I can give you a good example. My girlfriend, of four, I was 14 when we met, and at age 48, she got cancer for the third time, which metastasized. I moved out to San Diego to live with her. Um, and at that time, I was not going to church. I was not practicing. I believe in God, yes. Um, but I happened to walk through the living room, and she's watching Joyce Meyer. And I know she was raised Catholic, and I'm just like, Kathy! <laughs> I had no idea! Um, so to this day, I believe that I'm going to see my best friend in heaven, whenever it comes that time. It's a bad example. When I was living in Florida, I was running a homeless ministry, I was driving the van for the church, I was very involved with the church. My next door neighbor, was an elderly woman who lived with her sickly son. Well, she became sick too, on oxygen. They could not leave the house, they were homebound. Um, and she poked her head out one day and said, oh, I really wish I could go to church, but I just can't leave the house. To this day, it haunts me that if I did not offer a home Bible study for her, she was hungry for God, and I didn't, I don't know why I didn't, but I didn't say, hey, why don't I come over for about a, a half hour and let's talk. I'll bring my Bible. Oh, she was hungry. She wanted that. And I didn't offer. So when on judgment day, she goes, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you tell me about Christ? Why didn't you offer that? What am I going to say? Sorry, I didn't think of it. <laughs> so I was too busy. You know, I pray that that doesn't happen and that I do see her and her son in heaven. That she was hungry, so I'm praying at the last minute she did reach out. God gives us every opportunity mm -hmm. to reach out. Yes, ma'am. Um, I talked to a girlfriend last night, and I've known her since she was probably 12, and we're 70 now, so that's been a lot of years. And, uh, she would call herself atheist slash agnostic. And just the circle of friends that I had, some of us were Christians, some not. Well, I talked to Kathy last night. She said that before we hung up, <laughs> she says, I want to tell you, I'm right with God. Oh, and hallelujah. I, <laughs> I said, that has made this phone call. That is because I knew God would do it, mm -hmm. and I was just fortunate enough that she gave me that message. Oh, yeah. oh, very nice. Wow. Wow. That is wonderful. Praise God. Oh, yeah. Is there somebody that you may know? You know, our neighbors or whatever? There's really no excuse that we can use to not tell somebody about Christ. It says um, in Luke 5 26, it says, Later, I'm uh, getting ahead of myself. If you know someone who needs Christ and you don't know how to approach them, there's a thing called a Matthew party. How many of you know what a Matthew party is? I'm in the right crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> um, this is Luke 5.26. It says, Later, Levi, who was known as Matthew, held a banquet in his home at, with Jesus as the guest of honor. Many of Levi's fellow tax collectors and other guests ate with them. There's the Pharisees were there. So a Matthew party is basically a get together with a few Christians and unsaved people. And I have actually, if you're really interested, this is how to throw a Matthew party. Okay, we're going to give you ideas on how to throw it. It says, who to invite? How do we make a Matthew party evangelistic? Socialize first, shine your light, springboard into spiritual and share Jesus. So you don't want to just, there's not a Bible thumping meeting, it's not a Bible study. 
if you're going to have a barbecue or something, you get together. Uh, when I first moved out here, I invited my next door neighbor just to get to know her with my mother and my sister, and we had a white glove tea party, you know, and, and we, we talked. It was a chance to, for others to know that we as Christians can have fun. We're good people. We're not, oh, you have to repent, repent. <laughs> That's not always like that. We want to have, we have fun. We get together. So don't wait till until it's too late. Do you really know, do we know, what commitment, honor, and integrity are? In Proverbs 27 it says, The just man walketh in his integrity, his children are blessed after him. We don't want to hand curses down the line, we want to hand blessings. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, a prophet once told me that I had a legacy of faith from my grandmother that mm -hmm. passed down through my mother to me. You know, I just wanted to mention when you were talking about talking to people that uh, don't know Christ, there was a person that used to volunteer very faithfully for a long time at our food bank. And um, he was uh, formerly a Hells Angels person and um, and he became very sick he got cancer and cancer of the throat and things and for many years he fought this off and on and he would have to go for treatment or something and then he'd come back and things would be okay for a while and I went to him one time and I said um, I said I just want you to know that uh, I don't know whether you believe in God or not but I said I'm praying for you I'm praying for not only for your cancer but also for your soul and I hope that everything is all right with you. And he says, I don't believe in that stuff. I don't need your prayers. And I said, I'm praying for you anyway. Mm -hmm. And I've said that to him several times during through the years. And recently, he has had to have major surgery. He had an 11-hour surgery. They have not only removed the cancer from his throat, but his whole part of his face had to be removed. And he is still not walking. He is still in the hospital. He's supposed to go home very soon. And every morning, Bob and I pray for him. We continue to pray for him. And I pray for his soul. And I do believe that when people, whenever you tell somebody you're praying for them anyway, when they're in the trouble, they've got to think about them. Yeah. They've got to think, somebody is praying for me. Maybe I should pray also. And, and I know it, yeah. And I think it's good to let people know, even if they're not receptive to what you're saying, True. that very you're good. praying for them. Mm -hmm. It's a very good idea. And yes. continue to do so. Yes. Yeah. And I know this person you're speaking of, and his wife just passed away. So he's got to be thinking about what happens yes. after death. Mm -hmm. so, and I don't know that I don't know that she knew God or not. But you know when we're on our deathbed, sometimes if you know that there's people praying somewhere for you, it's going to make you think God help you. Yeah. Because she also worked there for many years. And if you know someone. Even in a coma. Yeah. Um, my older sister was in a coma one time. She got pneumonia with it. Yes. She got very, very sick and was in a coma. Uh, I drove out from Tucson to Phoenix to see her in the hospital. And after she came out of it, she remembered me being there. Yes. I didn't know what to do. Yes. So we basically sang songs from when I was a child. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Jesus loves me. This I know. Nowadays, 
uh, during power outages or even whenever they want to. They're stealing and destruction and more. It seems like no one needs the excuse to act badly. And pastor said in church, evil is being called good now and good is being called evil. You know, we are considered haters. And it's not that we're haters. We hate sin, but not the people. And that is not separated or defined. Um, we, we should not be complaining. An example of complaining is when people are brought, when the people were brought out of Egypt, God became angry because it seemed like nothing pleased them. You know, who wants to be around someone who complains all the time? I'll walk out of my way to avoid them. You know, because I don't want to, and we know, I don't know anybody here, but we know people in our families, our friends, that are just, oh man, I'm going to stop coming, just complain, complain, complain. Um, so God got angry at it. In Numbers 11, 1, it says, And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord, and the Lord heard it, and his anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burnt among them and consumed them, and they were in the uttermost parts of the camp. Well, Moses did pray, and God quit the fire, you know. But even later, in Numbers 11, 12, Moses got tired of their complaining. He says, Have I conceived all these people? says, have I begotten them, that thou shouldest say unto me, carry them in thy bosom, as a nursing father beareth a suckling child, and come into the land which thou swearest to the fathers. He's like, these are not my kids. <laughs> then the Lord did provide manna. This was when the Lord provided manna. Uh, and like I said, they complained about, you know, he gave them water, man. They're still complaining. Well, we don't have any meat. You know, the Lord brought us out here from Egypt to die. You know, so they're not thankful that God relieved them from Egypt. It says, so the Lord gave them meat until it came out of their nostrils. <laughs> it says in Numbers 11, 19 to 20, it says, ye shall not eat only one day, not two, not three, not five, not, not ten days, nor twenty, but even a whole month until it comes out of your nostrils and it be loathsome to you. You wanted them to get sick of it. It <laughs> says, um, because that ye have despised the Lord which is yeah. among you, and have wept before him, saying, Why came we forth from Egypt? After 400 years, he hears their cries and brings them out of Egypt, and now they're complaining. <laughs> This complaint got them wandering for 40 years. It also got everybody that was 20 or older, they did not go into the promised land. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it's in Numbers 14, 26 to 33, if anybody wants to look it up. So the Lord, the Lord speaks, and he says, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation, which is murmuring against me? It says, Your carcasses shall fall in the wilderness, and all that are numbered with you, according to your whole number from 20 years old and upward, which have murmured against me. So only Caleb and Joshua were the only two that were able to go into the promised land. We need to be careful about complaining, commenting to our fellow Christians. Watch your words. Proverbs 6, 16, 19 says, These six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that decides wicked imaginations, a false witness who speaketh lies, feet that are run swift to mischief, the seventh, he that soweth discord among the brethren. Discord means disagreement, strife, conflict, or lack of harmony. When you stir up trouble in the church, God calls it an abomination. Yeah. We are to be encouraged and joined together as a family. He wants us to unite, not tear down. But if you hear somebody murmuring or complaining and speaking bad of another, you say, hey, you need to watch your words, you know. I don't know how you would approach them or what, depending on what they're saying or what they're doing. But uh, they need to, we need to maybe say something to them 
you know, God doesn't like that. <laughs> I don't know how you would approach it, but it, just don't listen to it. We don't want to sow discord. What does it mean when we complain? It creates trouble among the children of God. And who wants to be around someone who complains all the time? If we have a legitimate disagreement with someone, the Bible tells us how to deal with that. Yeah. It says Matthew 18, 15 to 17. Yes. It says, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he shall if he shall hear you thou if he listen to you, you gain a brother. I'm paraphrasing. It says, but if he will not hear you, then take it to three or two more. Do it with someone around as a witness. It says that the mouth of the two or three witnesses of every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, I would think the church would be the pastor. I don't, I don't know that we should stand in front and toast. <laughs> go to pastor. The church I'm going to hear, I'm going to say to pastor that we're not going to announce it over the loudspeaker. Hey, we're <laughs> so, But if you neglect to hear it from the pastor, let him be unto thee as heathen man and a publican. Publican is a sinner. So we're just leave it. Nowadays, people sue each other at the drop of a hat. Um, how many have ever watched Judge Judy? <laughs> you your brothers, your sisters, your mothers, your neighbor, everybody complaining and trying to sue the other for something yeah. silly. Mm -hmm. It's sure. that is stupid. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's crazy. We need to look and be thankful for what we have and what we're able to do. We are a blessed nation. Can you? There's third world countries that don't have clean water. Right. Clothes to wear. Every time I take a shower, I thank God for running hot water. There was a time I didn't have it. <laughs> I lived many, almost a year and a half with no running water. You know, I had a hose, run a hose in. You know, and I would heat it up on the stove. So. I won't tell you, but I was a clean person, but it was not running water. <laughs> Um, we have we don't go hungry. We have food banks. We have people who help us. We have churches that give. Yes, ma'am. Out of the Navajo Nation, during this time of the pandemic, was it was discovered that they did not have water, oh. and it was a Christian organization that went in to get water to the people because they couldn't even wash their hands. Oh, yeah. They had no way of washing their hands. That's here in the United States. It's the Navajo yes. Nation. Yes. 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 There are there are many homeless and hurting people. Yep. Um, so if you have a nice home, if you have shelter, if you have a roof over your head, yeah. be thankful. Yeah. Um, anytime I start thinking, oh, poor pitiful me, this is wrong, this is wrong, all I have to do is look at my older sister. And she's been such a blessing to me. Um, even though I'm younger than her, I always kind of felt like I was older because I kind of had to take care of her. She has some, um, she had seizures and some other problems. Um, but she feels like my little sister, you know, and I just love her so much. But she has to live with somebody always. She has seizures. She doesn't remember things. Um, she can't walk very well, even though I've been in two car accidents and four back surgeries and knees. And I'm walking. I'm standing up. So anytime I start feeling bad about something, I just think of her and I'm like, thank you, Jesus. You know, and I think Mom even preached one time that Kathy was kind of bothering her and God said, how would you like to be her? <laughs> no. Um, but we don't need to envy what other people have either. If you don't want to say, oh, man, look at them. They got a nice car, nice truck. Oh, I wish I had that. You know, be thankful for what you do have. It could be worse. It could be a lot worse. 
<laughs> we don't know what they're going through. You know, they could be in debt up to their eyeballs and on the brink of bankruptcy. Who knows? Um, our past may explain why some of us are suffering while we have homeless and why we have um, people that are in different levels. Sometimes it goes back in history, um, but we don't use that excuse for bondage. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 in the NLT says the temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptations to be more than what you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure it. We may go through troubles, but he's with us through them, and he's going to make sure we come out good on the other side. We must abide and continue in the word until it becomes a revelation given by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Continuing is important. Um, Mark 4.24, in the NLT, Jesus says, Hey, close attention to what you hear. The closer you listen, the more understanding you will be given, and you will receive even more. Um, an example about reading. Kenneth Hagin, I, I adore Kenneth Hagin's teachings. Um, he was teaching about how he had read the Bible cover to cover several times. And he was asking, he was giving the example where the demon was in front of him and Jesus. Jesus was talking to him, and he's like, do something, Jesus, I can't hear you. The demon's in the way. And he kept going and going, he's like, well, do something. And finally, he got fed up and says, demon, get out of here. <laughs> and Jesus said to him, well, I was wondering when you were going to do something. <laughs> yeah. Jesus is done. He finished his work. It's up to us. And so he said, what do you mean, waiting for me to do something? He goes, uh, he goes, show me where it's written three times in the Word. And God goes, I'll show you four times in the Word where it's written. That it is now his responsibility mm -hmm. to do the work of Christ. Mm -hmm. To do it. It's perfectly okay to ask God to where it's written. When you want to hear, when you hear a voice telling you something, and you're, hmm, is that me? Is that God? Is that the devil? Ask God to show you in the Bible. Where is it written that this is, you know, the Bible gives experiences for every situation we can come up against. It is a living word. Even though you read it cover to cover, if you read it cover to cover 20 times, you can still read a passage. Wow, where'd that come from? It was a revelation to you. It just woke you up. And, I mean, I've done that. I, I was reading Ecclesiastics the other day. Months and all of a sudden, man, I have never read this before. And I, I've read, I have read it before, but it just never clicked. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever you're going through at the time, when you read that part of the Bible, it will speak to you through the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Sunday, uh, we need to remember who we are. Children of God, the Most High, King of Kings. We are royalty. Yeah. And we are women and men of honor and integrity, and we need to act that way. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you all. Heavenly Father, go with us as we leave today. Through this week, Lord, let us be aware of our actions, God. Let us be aware of those around us, Lord, if they are saved or not, or if they need an inspiring word or build them up or encouragement, Lord. Let us be great and good ambassadors for your kingdom, Lord, that we may draw more to you so they can be saved. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.